What's going on guys? It's Body by Natalie and I'm coming at you today to talk all about strength and what RIR is, what's it mean, how to base your strength off of that, how to increase weight every week and how to keep getting stronger while making appropriate increases to your volume and your training. So today's video is gonna be all about how to increase your strength and track your progress with that. So the first thing you wanna do is pick two to three exercises that you wanna get stronger at, whether that be a squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press. These are your main lifts and those are gonna be the major compound lifts. Just pick two to three that you really wanna work at and get stronger at, and that's what you're gonna be tracking every week. And it doesn't really matter your sets or your reps just yet. Pick, you know, a strength-based rep to start at, either that's, you know, 10 reps, eight reps, whatever you wanna do, and you're gonna stay there for at least three to four weeks. But every week, you're going to be aiming to increase the weight and get stronger, and that's where the RIR is gonna come into play. So you can increase the volume appropriately and gain strength and keep getting strength. And if you want a step-by-step, week-by-week program that does that for you, I have my new Build and Burn Fit Guides that are available for purchase. If you go to my website, bodybynatalie.com, they're 12-week programs designed specifically for that, to increase your strength, build a physique, and get stronger at just the main lifts. But I wanna to talk to y'all about what is an RIR. So RIR means reps in reserve. Basically, how many reps you have left in the tank after a set. So for example, an RIR of zero is a failure set. You can't do any reps after that. RIR of one is one set, or one rep left in the tank. Two, two reps. This is sliding down. So it really depends on how confident you are, how comfortable you are, and how much weight you're lifting. And the more you do it, the more you'll be able to kind of guesstimate how much weight that is for you. But to start off, just start adding weight, get to that rep range that you're aiming for, whether that be eight or 10, whatever, and then base your RIR off that. So if you're doing an RIR of one, three sets of 10, you wanna pick a weight that you can do for 10 reps and feel like you can maybe push out one more before either your form goes off or you just fail. Whereas an RIR of two, you wanna pick a weight that you can do for 10 reps with two reps left in the tank. Maybe you feel like you can push out, push out 12 at that weight. The lightest week in your strength program would be an RIR of three. Next week, RIR of two. The week after that, RIR of one. So that helps you base your strength off that day and so you can track your progress to see if you actually are getting stronger. Are you adding more weight to the bar? Instead of just going into the gym, messing around with some weight, pushing yourself some days and then other days you're slacking and you're just spitting in circles and you're not actually making real true results or gains. So you really want to base your progress off of how you can track it, which is why I suggest picking two to three exercises to do on a weekly basis, increase the weight every week based on an RIR scale. I'm going to show you some examples of my deadlift. This week I'm aiming for an RIR of one. Last week was an RIR of two for me and I did deadlifts at 185 pounds. You just wanna increase the weight by maybe five, 10 pounds, or more or less, depending on how you feel. That's why the RIR scale is so great to use because you go based off how you feel that day in order to have optimal intensity and effort in your workout. I'm gonna show you all my warm-ups for the deadlifts to get to that RIR of one, and I'll talk to you all throughout the, the time I do this, so you can kind of understand and see what I'm doing. So, here we go. I just did my first warm-up set of deadlifts. I usually just start with a plate at 135 pounds, but pick a weight that you can do for about 12 to 15 reps. It's just a warm-up set. I recommend doing at least three to five warm-up sets before you go into your working sets for your main lifts. Gradually increase it. So you want your first set to be 12 to 15 reps. Second set, 10 to 12 reps. Third set, eight to 10 reps. Fourth set, six to eight reps. And then your fifth set, for me, is gonna be my working set. So base your warm-up sets off of how many reps you're aiming for 
for your working set for your main lift. And for this week, my working sets are gonna be five by sixes. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't matter what you start at. I'm doing five by sixes because it's farther along in my training program. But the very first week of this program, I think I was doing three by eights or three by 10, something like that. So um, the sets are higher this week, reps are lower. And, and that's what I'm aiming for. Now I'm gonna add a quarter. You can add either five pounds, 10 pounds. I'm gonna hit this second warm up set and I'll talk to y'all after. <laughs> I did 10 reps there for my second warm up set. I'm gonna add probably another plate. You can add, again, another five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever you feel comfortable with. Another key component to your training is rest times. Your rest times for your main lifts are gonna be longer than the rest times for your other normal exercises. For me, I like to take at least three minutes between my heavy sets. You can do three to five minutes. I wouldn't go longer than five minutes, but basically you just want to rest until you feel 100% ready for the next set. It doesn't matter how long it takes because the longer you rest, the more you'll be able to lift every set. If you're lifting 225 and resting a minute, you might not be able to get that fourth or fifth set. Whereas if you are lifting 225 and you rest three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, you can get the last couple sets at 225. So you'll be able to lift more weight over time, more volume, more gains. I think I made a mistake on the last thing I said. I said last week I hit 185 here, but it was 225. So this is 225 now. I definitely felt like I could push out at least two, maybe even three more reps before failure. I feel good, I'm gonna add probably another 10 pounds to each side to make it 245 for a set of six. That felt pretty heavy. You saw that that last rep, I had to kind of pause and rework my grip. My grip was slipping a little bit. I felt like I could maybe push out one more, but the last two reps were, were a struggle. And that's really what you wanna feel to make sure you're lifting heavy enough weight and the right amount of weight to actually create change and put enough stress on your body to grow muscle and increase strength. Whereas if you're not pushing yourself like this and you're not getting to the point where you're uncomfortable, then it's gonna be hard to make change. 245 felt good. That's a 20 pound increase from last week. And next week, when I decrease the RIR again to zero, that is a failure set. So I want max effort on this for next week. And I'll probably add maybe another 20 pounds, 25 pounds, depending on how I feel that day. But for today, 245, RIR of one feels pretty good. So that's just an example of how you can Pick an exercise to do, pick a rep range, stick with that for three weeks. I've been doing five sets of sixes for three weeks now. And you want to increase the weight every week while keeping that RIR scale in mind. If you're trying to do max effort sets every week, you're not gonna make any real strength gains or muscle gains, and you're just gonna burn out. So this is a great example of how you want to use an RIR scale to progressively make increases in weight and volume to make sure that the workouts you're doing, the exercise you're doing, you're getting stronger at and better at. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I'm going to be talking to y'all a little bit after I finish my sets about how heavy you want to be lifting for your accessory lifts. So I'm going to finish these sets and stay tuned for those. <laughs>
balance of how you want to increase the weight for a set. So I started at three plates a side. I was aiming for 10 reps. I did 15, added a plate, did 15 again, added another plate, did 15 again, but I'm aiming for 10. So if you're aiming for a certain rep range, it's okay to keep increasing the weight as long as you feel like you're giving it a good enough effort. So if you're just breezing through the reps and you're scared to add on weight or you feel like it's good enough, then it's probably not good enough. So as long as you can keep good form while increasing the weight and aiming for your rep range, then go right ahead, increase the weight. So I have five plates each side, aiming for 10. Let's see how it goes. So this felt pretty good. I might add just a little bit more weight to each side because I felt like I could push out at least like two more reps there, but for your accessory moves, you want to keep them at an RIR of one. So almost training to failure, but make sure you have at least enough energy for one rep left. So I'm going to add a quarter to each side, try 10 again in a minute or two, and see how it goes. I'm a wishing well. Don't know what you seen in me, girl. You was my all, you believed in me, girl. First thing we spent was over to me, girl. That's all my promise. Alright, hey guys, that was my full leg day workout. I did heavy deadlifts, some accessory moves, worked the glutes, worked the hamstrings, worked the abs, and I want to call it a day. So if you like this video, learned anything at all, like, comment below with any questions, share with a friend, and I'll catch y'all later.